Okay, so I just want to check in um, about sourcing in the pitch. So as you can see, I have used a number of different sources in the pitch um, that I've presented as an example. So I'm just going to go through what kind of sources they are and um, where and how I've used them. Um, so you can see that I have a lot of um, what's called parenthetical citations, so, so little citations that are in brackets throughout. So you've got one up here and then a zillion listed um, with individual sources separated by semicolons. And then I also have um, some in what's called integral citation. So you can see the person's name that I'm citing, and then because it's an audio story, I've made that person a bit of a character by including a bit of information about who they are. It helps me to sort of explain that they're not just, you know, a blogger, and they have some credibility. Um, so let's just like look at what kind of sources these are, and then we can go through and see where the different kinds of sources, like what, what work the different kinds of sources are doing in the pitch itself. Um, so this is a, a fun exercise to do, um, is to try to challenge yourself to identify the different kinds of sources within um, a reference list. So if we just look at the first one, you see Berlin, 1987, Rhetoric and Reality, you're noting that this is italicized and that it's from SIU Press. So if you know nothing about this source and you have no idea what it is, you might just Google Rhetoric and Reality, Writing Instruction in American Colleges and see what you come up with. The other thing that you can do is Google SIU Press and see if it's a newspaper or a publishing house. And what you'll find is that it, in, it is a publishing house and that this is a title of a book. Um, in APA style, titles of books are in italics, um, as well as titles of periodicals or journals. So this is a scholarly book. Um, so let's look at the next one. Uh, one of the biggest differences we see here is the fact that you've got a full date with a a day, a month, and a year. This is an indicator that um, this has come out in a source that is updated as regularly as daily. Um, if there was a time here, it would be as regularly as hourly. Um, and so that's an indicator that this is a newspaper or something different. Um, so we've got a title here. And then the name of the website, which I think should be in italics, and this is a mistake. Um, maybe I can just fix that. Um, film blogging in the real world. So I would hazard to guess that this is a blog site. Um, and so we can um, follow the link to discover exactly what it is, but I'll tell you it's a blog. Um, let's look at the next one. Oh, I don't know why so much is not italic. Um, the next one has two authors and a date. Um, it looks a lot like the, the date for the book rather than the date for the blog. And then a title, and then another title in italics and then these two numbers here, and then these numbers here. So what's going on here, when you have a, a title and then followed by another title in italics, you're definitely working with a journal article um, when you're working in APA style. Um, so you've got the first title, which is not in italics, is the title of the specific essay, and then the title in italics that follows is the title of the periodical, so the name of the journal. Um, this is the volume and the issue number of the journal, so this one, this journal comes out a minimum of six times a year, and it's in its 36th year of publication. 
And then these numbers here are the page numbers of the specific essay within that volume. So if you were to get it off of the shelf, you'd be able to flip to um, page 687. Okay, so the next one you can see is very similar. We've got a title followed by another title that's italics now. So that is again a journal article. Um, here you've got a title that's in italics and a press with a, an address. So you know that that is a book, a scholarly book. Um, another uh, sorry about this I don't know why it's undone my formatting another journal another journal you can see once you start identifying them you can see them quite easily okay so this one's a bit different so it looks a lot more like the blog that we saw above um, with the date um, but it's got a very clear name of a recognizable newspaper so this is a news article that was accessed online. Um, journal, see, we've got the title followed by another title and the volume issue. Journal. And then here again, the date is a big indicator. Um, this is from Vox, which is a web news site. Um, Another journal, a whole journal dedicated to deviant behavior. Sutherland Smith's piece is in a journal. Um, another e news, so another news site. Another journal. And sociological inquiry. Another journal. So you can see that the balance of things is um, more scholarly sources than popular sources. So the e-news sites, the blog, the web um, news, that those are considered popular sources, um, not because they're necessarily unreliable, but because they're up to different things. Um, the scholarly sources are the uh, journal articles that have been peer-reviewed and published um, through a lengthy process, as well as the scholarly books, also peer-reviewed. So where have I used these sources and um, what kind of work are they doing in the pitch? So you can see we encounter the first one here, um, and if you go to that entry in the reference, you see that that one is a blog site, and it's Lady Bird just became the best reviewed movie on Rotten Tomatoes, and it is just backing up the claim that I make initially that it came out to glowing reviews. So that's all it's doing, and it's just connecting to an archived um, rating in Rotten Tomatoes. Um, then I have my original uh, opinion piece, which actually I think is missing. Yeah, it's missing from my reference list, so I should add that so people can find it. Um, and then I have this list of um, several different sources. These are all examples of the research that I reference in this sentence, right? So I say, there's a ton of research on X, Y, and Z, and then I have the little word C at the beginning of the citation which is saying, this is where you can see examples of that research. And then I, you know, there's a ton of research in this area. I could have put a hundred sources here. Um, but what I was really trying to do was show a bit of a timeline. Um, you know, that this research has been going on since before, but I chose 94 here because it really ramped up after the internet became a thing. So, that it's sort of been consistent throughout, right? So we've got from 94, 95, to early 2000s, mid 2000s, and just last year. Um, so I, it was my effort to sort of create a timeline and show that not only is this re there a lot of research, but that it's still ongoing and that there haven't been too many narrative shifts in the research. It's all doing that same thing. 
Um, okay, so our next instance of citation is here with what is called an integral um, attribution, uh, where I actually mention the source within my sentence and make the uh, writer a part of my story, right? So I say, today's student cheaters are shoplifters in our education store. John McMurtry puts it best. Now I do this for a few reasons. First of all, this is a pretty big claim and it's useful to have my voice buttressed by the authority of a, a professor emeritus, which is a retired um, uh, professor who is well respected. Um, so that's very helpful. It also helps me to um, kind of say like, you know, this isn't just me saying this, which lends credibility to the strength of the idea or the argument. And it does a lot of this weight of the, the rhetorical turn. At this point in the pitch, I'm saying, you know, like the, uh, I'm pointing out that, you know, this focus over here on policies and vigilance is never going to work and that the real problem is something different. And then bringing in a source and introducing a character sort of helps to bridge the introduction of, well, what, what is the problem? What is the real problem? So it's, it's, this is doing a lot of rhetorical work um, for me. Um, Sutherland Smith, her article is about the fact that um, academic cheating is uh, talked about, written about, and encoded as uh, in a language of criminality. So that's why I, you know, I want to get into that in the pitch. So I included it here without talking much about it, just as a teaser, I guess, if you're a nerd and going through my reference list. Um, and then you see here, these are the three newspaper articles that were included. So if we just find McCoy, you can see this was from the Washington Post. Um, the title tells us that it's the secret surveillance of suspicious blacks in one of the nation's poshest neighborhoods. And so these are, these are news articles documenting this practice of, um, in particular in the state, I don't think I have any Canadian examples, although I'm sure that they exist, um, but in particular in the states, black shoppers being um, surveilled in a way that white shoppers are not um, because of racist policies and practices. Um, and so I just wanted to document what I was pointing to with those news articles. Um, okay, and then here we have another C, so that we know that this is like examples um, that we might turn to. And in this case, it's examples of the um, articulations of intellectual liberal arts tradition. And you'll note that many of these are the academic books. I think two of them are books. So Berlin's a book, Kimball and Murphy. Uh, Murphy's an article, and Kimball is a book, an older one. So typically when you're thinking about and you're going to dig your um, fingers into theory, you're looking at scholarly books because they have the length and the gravitas to really dig into theory and, and help it become established. An article is very limited um, when it comes to theory building in any real sustainable way. So it's not surprising to see that when I'm mentioning an example of um, educational theory, that I'm actually going from um, journal articles, which all of these were, into scholarly books. So this one and this one. Okay, so that's my little analysis for you of the uh, ways in which I've cited. I am expecting that you will try to cite in similar ways in your pitch.